Hello, this is Haku Dubin, and today we're going to be reading level 187. I think it was called Summer Nights. Or No One's Summer, I can't remember the name. I'll have to check again. Or just read it to figure it out. Now, if you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get right into this. And start us off with a little story, I think. Oh. Actually, it starts off with my computer freezing. There we go. Okay. On summer nights, I can't help but weep. The ceaseless cries of cicadas call out to me within. The endless fields of wheat and other assorted grains that lie in settles shuffling around me. Level 187 is nobody's summer. Oh, that's what it's called. Not a single other breath is drawn here. Only the occasional man-made house can contradict this. However, an anomaly is presented to me here. A solitary vending machine stands in an empty dirt clearing. A singular oi ocha bottle of green tea lies inside. I laid beside a machine. The cold air gave out was like an ashes oasis on this night, where warm breezes clung to me. When I got here, the sun hung low, a warning for me to find a shelter to sleep. Yet I failed to heed it as the houses that layered the landscape proved to be nothing more than a distraction. Each one I had found contained nothing more than a gas-powered heater. A sick joke. I've never been a fan of summer. It's a social season. If you don't have someone to spend the time with, sweltering away in the sun, you'll end up cooped up at home, where only the buzzing AC units can witness your isolation. Maybe level 187 was made to mock me. The back rooms could just be manifestation, a manifesting of environments to poke fun at my tendency towards introversion. Or maybe I'm just bitter. I actually don't like summer because it just gets too hot and uh, winter you can always bundle up in more blankets and be more comfy. Summer or you can only shed so many layers before the only layer left is your skin. Alright, let's continue. Sleeping is impossible here. Sure, the vending machine brought me a temper, a term regulated he even, but the sounds around me were unbearable. The light of the drink machine was the only thing saving me from the total darkness now that the sun had gone down, but it amplified the noises encompassing me. It was a symphony of chaotic yet familiar roaring. The ever-present buzzing of the cicadas were somehow more tantalizing than they previously were, and the shambling of plant life around me echoed the mental assault of the insects. But even new noises confronted me here. The sound of fireworks bursts around me caused me to flinch with every explosion. And kids playing reverberated in every direction. Though despite all of this, there was not a single sign of anyone else here. I don't know why, but I started to tear up. This always happens in summer. Maybe it's because I feel left out. I've always wanted to watch fireworks with someone. It's a sight that can really only be enjoyed at others. But friends are as fleeting as morning dew. And I've never managed to enjoy my time with them before the... Lifespan of our relationship fizzles out.
All the sounds stopped without warning, all at once, as though put on mute. I thought the noise was worse for sleeping, but the silence was even more provoking. There's no way to describe it, but the quietness was deafening. My own mind emanated a false, harsh screeching. My own heart threw me into a frenzy at the sound of a Tycho drum cultivated such feelings. Then a voice freed from this panic. Feminine and ethereal, it speaks. Ego benefits you, a shadow of gold, a frantic follower, spitting burning edicts. Yet, still by the smoldering, by the smoldering sun, frayed as under, he fails to none. Without even taking a second to think, I hurry towards the voice. I fail to even stand. I simply crawl all in with a fastened pace to it. Though, as I do, my body disintegrates into cinders. It first starts at my legs, slowly crawling, slowly rising to my upper body. All that's left behind of my scraps crackle with flame. Yet, I continue even so. I look up from the ground towards where the voice came from. An orb of light instills in me hope. It must have seen me coming for it, and is now trying to guide me. I cannot feel my burning skin. It sheds off like leaves on an autumn-bound tree. Perhaps it was the summer air make, asking to pain. This proves to be my own downfall, as my own arms eventually burn up before I reach a circular thing. With a scornful tongue, it only it marks my failure by saying, Why? Survival difficulty, class 3. Unsafe, unsecure, low entity count. Security procedures. Level 187, 2 primary effects, both influence temperature and human sleep patterns. As such, if one is allowed the chance, it is highly recommended to prepare greatly before entering this location. When traveling through this locale, exits are few and far between, so we expect it to be in harsh environments for multiple days on end without being given the chance to sleep properly. One is unable to rest fully within the level. Be sure not to loiter here, or one may suffer the standard effects of sleep deprivation, hallucinations, fatigue, etc. The weather uh, of this level is known to be exceedingly hazardous and very inconsistent. Be sure to be equipped with a decent water supply, appropriate clothing for the heat, weather-resistant equipment, and mobile or cover, tents, umbrellas, etc. Description Level 187 is known for its characteristics rolling hills of old and yellow farmland, with the occasional hay bale spotting the landscape. Strips of trees can be seen constantly in the far-off distance, but no matter how far one goes in this infinitely sized level, they can never be reached. Hot gusts of air sweep through the level, and the sun overhead smolders brightly. The average recorded temperature here is approximately 96 degrees Fahrenheit, with the heat strangely rising to a, a usual 112 degrees Fahrenheit. Theories that the sun is nothing more than a visual oddity and is false in nature are often circulated, though aren't backed with any real supporting evidence. Houses have occasionally been spotted among the fields, but proved to be bad shelter due to them only containing heaters inside. Strangely, these homes are often take, seen taken in a Japanese influence design, especially a according to a suburban style. Other human structures have been rarely spotted, though all of which bear no similarity to one another. Some have found art installations, others temples, with no identifiable patterns. As mentioned previously, sleep is, for an unknown reason, 
impossible whilst at this level. This pair Edward Howe's gear exits of this level tend to be like for a long time here, especially volatile. To combat this, many people traversing through this level and take large amounts of caffeine to hold them off until they exit. Although common, this is not recommended as the come down from caffeine may cause one to be more tired than one would be without consuming it. Entities and Visual Oddities At night, the entities of this level are prone to activity. The only recorded creatures are the previously mentioned hay bells, of whom are informally referred to as hay bells. These hay bells will produce specific sounds while as active which range from the hissing of cicadas to the sound of humans and fireworks. Despite this vocal activity, they are not recognized to be fully sentient due to the lack of developed brain. Instead, they are more biologically aligned with jellyfish, being almost entirely composed of water, structural proteins, muscles, and nerve cells. Although not a part of their physical makeup, a thin layer of hay coats their outer body protecting their fragile innards. In response to physical stimuli, they will slowly roll away. They'll do very little beyond that. It's very common for one to suffer visual and audible hallucinations due to the temperature and sleep-related abnormalities apparent on this level. Though these hallucinations often are prone to strange effects themselves, the most common and of which is a physical manifestation of said delusions, no matter how fantastical their nature is. Those with the knowledge of this occurrence can very easily exploit this to come at, at the level danger. But if consumed by with fear, this can often endanger the one suffering these effects. A common trend in these hallucinations is a theme of burning, most times engulfing the victim of these visions in flames. Entrances. Lighting oneself a flame in level 33 will cause one to awake in level 183's house. Now, why would you even do that? Oftentimes, a cicada's outer, outer husk can be found in level 81. Once consumed, it will, it will cause the individual to awake on the top of a hay bale. Lighting the carcass of a granero in level 130 will cause one to rise out of the dirt in level 187 the next time they fall asleep. Knocking on a red door without opening it in level 290 will cause one to awaken level 187 following the next time they consume any type of poultry. Saying summer in level 480 will cause one to awaken in one of the level's many houses. There exists only a singular exit within level 187. Consuming any abnormal structure or, or fully will bring one to either level 52 or level 172. This is known to be a very difficult task due to how inedible most of these constructs tend to be. Speak to me, Summer. Or live forever in winter's grasp. Oh, this was. Oh, that, as a sea author. Who you calling a pinhead? Oh my goodness, I love that name. They wrote this thing in 18 hours. Alright, that was uh, level 187. Nobody's summer. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!